Hi, everybody. Welcome to, to today's show of the Gamut Network. I'm joined today with a beautiful young woman by the name of Victoria that we've had some really exciting times with. And I thought she would be an absolutely perfect guest for the show. Victoria, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Mindy. So wonderful to see you. You look beautiful as always. Thank you. And I love, apparently we're coming from your room, which has this amazing background of, I believe, New York City? Yes, New York yes. City. <laughs> so Victoria, can you share with us today a little bit about your background, your story, your journey? Um, sure. So when I was a baby, um, I was never able to crawl or walk. And my parents are obviously concerned. So they went to a bunch of different doctors and they all got different opinions. But the last doctor I went to was the one that diagnosed me with congenital muscular dystrophy. So that means my muscles are weaker. I can't function as well. I don't walk at all. I can't stand up. I can't sit up on my own so that's why I need my wheelchair um and it's um and just not as independent as most people my age I mean I try to be but it's definitely hard um but I'm grateful to have a wheelchair so I can go around I can go to school I can go to all the things that I enjoy to do um and I guess I've gotten I've had some other complications from muscular dystrophy. It's um, it's given me scoliosis, so I've needed tons of back surgeries. I mean, not anymore, thank God, but when I was a kid, I had back surgery every year for like, I would say seven, maybe eight years. Um, so that's one thing, and the other thing is that I've also had a lot of respiratory issues over the years. I had I have asthma, um, and I just need like a whole bunch of other medical equipment just to keep my lungs as healthy as possible. And one thing that I do that I I think our audience um, listening in, I want to underscore is that is the really interesting part of the world of disability and or disease that you have a version of muscular dystrophy. My son Oliver has a completely different version of muscular dystrophy and it presents itself, even though it's in the same disease category, presents itself differently and it affects every body differently. And that is something that, um, when I went to the fashion industry to talk about the population of people with disabilities, was hard for them to get their head around that how in the world could you help so many different types of disabilities when they present so differently? And fortunately, we were able to do that just by modifying what already exists. And I think that it is it is so wonderful to see, you know, even though you said you 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 know aren't as independent, I find you incredibly independent. I have had the pleasure of seeing you in very different circumstances, one of which was going down our runway during New York Fashion Week, and you are a woman to be reckoned with. I think you have really done such an incredible job of showing the world that there really isn't much that you haven't figured out how to do, one of which is that you are currently in college and you go to Seton Hall. You are a freshman, is that right? Yeah, I'm in my second semester of my freshman year. I love that. And going to college, was it something that you had to specifically look at schools that had great programs for people with disabilities so that you knew that you were going to be in good hands, that you could navigate campus, et cetera. What was that like for you? Um, so it was definitely a long process. I mean, even for 
someone that isn't disabled. You know, you start thinking of college probably like your junior year of high school, maybe even earlier for some people. Um, for me, I started thinking about it probably this summer going into junior year. I decided that I did not want to live on campus just because I'm more of a homebody. And um, it just would have been a lot to pack all of my medical supplies to a dorm and it's even, it might even be smaller than my room. So there was that. Oh, sure it, was. it would be, no doubt about that. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, yes, I just would have missed my family and things like that. So I decided to look more in the area. I visited, I believe, five schools. And the first school that I visited was actually Seton Hall. And every time I went, I just loved it. So when I was touring Seton Hall, I met with the disabilities. Uh, I forget like what's actually called the initials are DSS, mm -hmm. which is the disabilities office on campus. So I had to meet with them, with my parents, just to talk about the different accommodations that I would need and to make sure that the campus was accessible enough, which it definitely is. It, um, I actually think out of all of them, besides maybe Drew, which was my second choice, it probably was the most accessible. It's just like, a, it's not exactly a square. There's like another round of buildings around it, but the buildings are very close to each other. It's flat. There's a lot of ramps. There's automatic doors, which have increased even since I got to campus. Oh, that's fantastic. And, and isn't it, you know, I have a, a senior, my daughter's a senior now, so she's, you know, thankfully out of the process, she's going to be going to University of Texas. But what you had to look at a school where, you know, she was looking at different criteria, you had criteria, and then on top of that, had to look at the school from the lens of somebody with a disability, which we will have to do when Oliver's of that age. But it's just very interesting to me that you have to look at certain things like automatic doors or accessible bathrooms or ramps and things like that, that a you know another senior wouldn't even necessarily know that those things existed. So that probably added a different layer to your to your search. Yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, I definitely considered like the programs as well. And Seton Hall had a great journalism program, which is what I'm majoring in. So it was just like the perfect match. Love it. And freshman year is going well, aside of what's happening in the world, but you're enjoying school and it's offering you everything that you had hoped. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a good year. I mean, the first semester was definitely more exciting because I wasn't trapped in the house. Yes, but I met a lot of good people. Um, the professors are nice. It's a beautiful campus. Um, the buildings are nice and accessible. And I did go to one basketball game at Prudential Center because that's where the basketball team plays. Yes, they're very good, aren't they? Yeah, they were, that was really fun. I love it. And, you know, one of the things that we talk about on the show is how important clothing is to milestones in your life. And I know that we got to share an experience for a milestone in your life, which was prom of last year. As you were a senior, you, um, I had actually received an email from your mom saying that, you know, the, this is such a big moment in a high school senior's life to be able to go to prom and that she was struggling with finding a dress that was appropriate for you and was fashionable. And the whole experience of finding a prom dress just was falling flat a bit for a young woman with a disability. 
Now, at the same time, I was fortunate enough to work uh, with a woman, a young girl at Scarsdale High School who was also a senior. And she was saying that, and she's able-bodied, that she was struggling with finding a, a prom dress and she couldn't imagine what it would be like for somebody with a disability to be able to find a great dress. And so we paired the two of you together to go through this experience together. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was like for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started looking for dresses probably like the beginning of 2019 because finding the perfect dress can take a long time. So we looked at a couple places. I tried a few dresses. And uh, like you said, it can be hard because of my wheelchair. Like most dresses have a lot of like sequins and embellishments and things like that. But I have this harness, the black harness that I'm wearing right now. It presses against my chest so that I can sit up straight and be as comfortable as possible. And if it's pressing against those embellishments, it's kind of digging into me and it's not the most comfortable, but the dresses that aren't like that, the dresses that don't have sequins and stuff, they're nice, but they're not necessarily my style. So it was kind of like you had one dress that you liked, so it wasn't as comfortable. Mm. Or you had a dress that was comfortable, but it wasn't exactly the one that matched your style. So it was a hard time finding both. And then, like you said, my mom emailed you and you met Kylie and all just happened at the same time and it was I remember it was my 18th birthday mm. mom picks me up early from school she said she had a surprise for me and the phone rang and it was you facetiming me and then you told me that I was getting my own prom dress and I was just like speechless it was like the mm. best birthday present I could ever get and then after that, I met with Kylie either in person or on Zoom. We talked about the design of the dress, the color of the dress, the style, the fabric, all these different factors. And then after we talked about it a little bit, we actually went to the, I believe it's called the Garment District in New York City. Okay. Yes. Just to, we went to like a different fabric stores, you figure that out. And then after that, it was just about measurements and Kylie coming all the way from New York State a couple times so I could try the dress, it was comfortable, so it fit right. And then it came together really well. And then, I don't know how this happened, but all of a sudden I was on TV, I was in newspapers. It was, it was amazing. And then the night of prom, I put the dress on, I had my hair and makeup done, and I felt so beautiful. And you were gorgeous, absolutely yes. gorgeous. And just to let everybody know, the, the style that Victoria wanted was very uh, pretty woman. The red dress that was in the movie was something that you really had a vision that that's what you wanted to look like. So Kylie um, from Scarsdale High School, now a, a graduate of, helped get that vision to life. She helped create it, she helped, she sewed it. You guys did this collaboratively. And what I love, and I do think the reason why you were on Access and, and were in articles is because it was so authentic that here too, young high school seniors, one with a disability, one without, that didn't even matter. You were both sharing an experience together and a milestone in each of your lives of going to prom. And you did it together and I think also formed a beautiful friendship because you ha are the same, no matter what your abilities are. And it was so, it was a highlight in my life also to be able to be um, a part of this experience and to see what you two developed together 
what you created together and to see Access Hollywood, now known as Access, understand how important the story was. And, and I believe that they did two shows on it, actually. One highlighting the whole process and the other of you at prom um, and showing the, the after. And, and that support that is authentic and genuine. And it was really just an amazing thing to watch, to, to see this all happen was absolutely a highlight in my life too. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, it was so much fun. And thank you and Kylie and everyone for in that dress, it came out perfect. It will, and we will find pictures of that so that we can post it <laughs> on the show so everybody can see how magnificent you you both were. Kylie did her own, also created her own dress and she looked equally as gorgeous. So now here we are, you're a freshman in college, you are a writer um, and you're, you're living out your dreams. So we like to end our show by asking one final question. And that is that the, the power of a vision board that I have next to me at all times when I'm working about who I want to meet in my lifetime, who I would love to be interviewed by, the likes of Ellen and Oprah, and where I want the world of adaptive to go. On your vision board, Victoria, what would be your dream? Where do you see yourself in life? What would be the image that you would have on your vision board? Okay, that, that, that's actually such a good question. Um, so I do hope to write for a very long time. It's something that I got into around the time I started looking for colleges. But my other passion is music. Mm. Like when I was in high school, I was in choir all four years. I did some musicals and I listened to music like 24 seven practically. And I just want to find a way to take those two passions and put it into one career, whether it's maybe reviewing like Broadway plays or singers albums or just interviewing celebrities, definitely more like the entertainment area. Um, so hopefully that's my career standpoint. And then in terms of who I want to meet, um, Alan is certainly a role model. I watch her videos all the time. She's such a happy person. She's very inclusive of all, all different kinds of people. Um, so she's certainly someone that I'd like to get interviewed by. Um, and then, I mean, if there's any celebrity that I would like to meet from a non-talk show standpoint, um, it would probably be Taylor Swift. Mm. I have been a fan of hers since I was like probably seven, maybe eight years old. That's how long she's been around. I just find her music to be great. I consider her to be a role model for sure in terms of writing. Her songwriting is just incredible. The way she takes her feelings and puts them into words for these amazing songs. It's definitely what I try to do. I try to take my passion for inclusion of disabled people and things like that, and also mental health, which is very important, especially in a time like this. Absolutely. And into writing, so I definitely would like to meet her and thank her for changing my life in several different ways. Um, and I guess, I would like to change the world. And I have no doubt that you will. And you are going to do everything that you put your mind to because I've seen you do it. Victoria, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been such a joy as always to speak with you. Now, um, if anybody would like to ask you questions or find out a little bit more about your story, is there a way that they can get in touch with you? Maybe on Instagram? Yes, so my Instagram is my first name, Victoria, and then a period, 
And then my last name, Rossi, but it's two eyes. So it's Victoria dot R O S S I I. Perfect. Because I'm sure people are going to want to connect with you. Yeah. You are always an inspiration and I absolutely love spending time with you. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. This was so much fun. Um, tell Oliver I said hi. I absolutely will. Thank you. And tell everybody on your end I said hello as well. Yes, I will. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Please email us at talent at gametmanagement.com and tell us a little bit about why you would be a great guest on our show.